happy generic time of the day product person uh, Zalan Yon for the PDM show at the PDM show on Facebook and Twitter pdm.show on the web um, listening to a, a podcast about podcasting this week and uh, one of the pieces of advice was uh, you know the, they were talking about the NPR type podcasts and, and why they're so successful one of the pieces of advice was uh, you should always speak as if you're uh, you know if you're doing a radio show or even a presentation always speak as if you're speaking to just a single person rather than a, a, a large audience so hello product person uh want to talk on this uh, quick drive cast about big product little product and what i mean by that is i'm kind of uh at the intersection as somebody who spent a lot of time in traditional product management where we were managing a big product and by big product i mean the actual thing that is packaged and sold uh, to end customers um, and uh, in my case and a lot of my colleagues cases uh, that would be a large enterprise software but um, working as more of a product owner these days and um, getting involved in a lot of discussions with my with my colleagues about you know the title product owner and product owner versus product manager and uh, you know I just want to share some comments here what I think uh, where I think a lot of confusion comes in is uh, is just with the the language, the limitations of the uh, of the language, and uh, you know the English language is very flexible, but uh, it can also be very ambiguous as well, uh, because we can use the same words, uh, can have multiple meanings uh, in multiple contexts, and it gets confusing. So. Uh, for example, I, I previously talked about the fact that it, it kind of drives me crazy that we call both product managers and project managers PMs. And that just seems potentially confusing. Our, our job is, whether we're product managers or product owners, like 90% of it is just uh, clarifying and making clear our intentions. So um, language can help with that. But I think language can also be an impediment. So big product, little product, and um, you know traditional product managers think in terms of these big products. Uh, a little product, you know, what I mean by that is, if we actually look at the verb from which the word product is derived, uh, the verb is produce, which is to make or create something. So, I. Th- you know, one tip I would give to traditional product managers when they're having challenges and issues wrapping their heads around the product owner title is just think about uh, the product owner as being responsible for the definition and value of what the scrum team produces. So produce is the verb and product is uh, I guess the noun or the adjective, uh, I can't remember. But um, if you think about it that way, then it really doesn't matter the scale at which uh, you are operating. So uh, if we just use a very simple analogy here, like a Tesla automobile, um, yeah, if you're an end consumer of Tesla, uh, then the big product is the actual car, right? Um, but if you're if you're a product owner within Tesla, you know the, your your small product could be anything uh, at any scale. So it could be a transmission, uh, it could be a battery, it could be a sensor uh, on the battery, it could be um, a piece of uh, embedded software that me- measures and reports on the battery's uh, health. Uh, it could be a sensor uh, in the uh, a sensor in the in the in the drivetrain or the wheels. Uh, it could be anything at any level, you know. And to to take that to a to a software scenario, um, a small product could be anything from uh, a, a, a minor change to a, a user registration screen uh, to uh, a, a, a new you know uh, button that offers help. Uh, it could be, you know, a, a new piece of supporting uh, product 
you know, information like a like a new support page or a new web page. So really, you know, big product. Yes, traditional product management, um, the, the actual thing that gets sold to the end customer, a little product, anything that is discrete that the team is producing that has some value. And I, and I mentioned the value piece because I think that's where a lot of um, a lot of time the traditional product managers struggle as well uh, because they they get caught up in now if we shift from the from the product aspect they get caught up in the owner aspect you know what does the product owner really own well what they own is making sure that what the scrum team is working on for any given iteration that the product i.e. the 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 fruits of the labor of the team what the team is producing to go back to the verb has value uh, so that's that's you know uh, uh, that's what they own, and um, you know I've seen I've seen traditional product managers, for example, complain that uh, that no product owners don't have any impact on financial success of the quote unquote product. And and again, I think we're just getting wrapped up in 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 semantics and and levels of scale here. The product owner, no matter how small scale. You know, let's say they're producing uh, j- just an embedded uh, um, piece of software to monitor that that battery sensor that we were talking about with the Tesla car. There's still, you know, a binary situation. Either that team is working on something that adds value to the overall value chain for Tesla and its customers, or or it's not. And, and it's important, you know, as as we all move to lean, and as we all um, focus on value added uh it's important that what we're what the scrum team is working on has value to um the organization to the end customer but it doesn't mean that that value is something that the customer themselves would particularly point to right um so just a quick car cast on that um let's not get too wrapped around with the language uh, if we think about the verb to produce, then uh, we are all, you know, as uh, uh, as uh, workers, as uh, as people on a team, uh, we are all producers. We are all producing some value. So the the idea of the product owner is to basically just own the definition of that value that we're producing in a given cycle or iteration and there's obviously product owners quote unquote at all levels of scale within the organization so just a quick example uh, when uh, when I was uh, working in IBM you know I would be a product manager for a piece of software that IBM would sell through its uh, global sales and marketing channels and I would think that my software was the product but, uh, but even at that level, uh, if you talk to the sales organization at IBM, they would often uh, view the product as not just the, not just the software that we produced, but also all of the services and support contracts that go along with that. And as a product manager, quote unquote, in that scenario, we would often get frustrated because a lot of times to the, to the IBM salesperson, the uh, the revenue from the from the um, professional services to install and customize our software and the revenue uh, to support it uh, from an ongoing perspective was often more lucrative uh, and of, of greater interest and it would drive us crazy because they would heavily discount the the uh, the software license um, to get the services business. And uh, that just shows you there that that you know I can I could jump up and down and say wait a second, the product quote unquote is the software, but you know it all depends on perspective. So that's uh, that's the key thing to keep in mind from the perspective of that salesperson. You know they're thinking about the whole product, which includes not just software, but includes services, includes maintenance contracts, um, and all of this. So. 
Um, we just need to, to not get too uh, confused or, or too, um, uh, you know, impeded by the language. And, and the language can be somewhat ambiguous. Um, another quick analogy you could use, for example, um, is more of a, a, of a farming type of, a type of language. So what if instead of a product owner, uh, what if uh, what if uh, the role was called a harvest owner? And if you can imagine uh, an agriculture scenario whereby you've got, let's say, a, a, an apple tree orchard, um, and uh, in each season that apple tree orchard produces a crop of apples, then you could be a product owner, quote unquote, for that crop. And just for example, just for the 2018. Uh, crop for example and you know what you're focused on is what is the you know maximizing the value that you're getting out of that crop that's the produce so um, the agriculture analogy is a good one because when we actually go to the grocery store uh, you know those fruits and vegetables are referred to as produce so you know maybe instead of product manager if you think of it in terms of produce manager then you know what is the produce that your scrum team is delivering um, and and is that maximized for value however that's determined within your uh, within your market and organization context then that's what you're the product owner of um, and it doesn't mean that the product has to be something that is uh, sold to the end customer it doesn't have to mean that is something that the end customer uh, touches and interacts with directly uh, it can be a component of that whole product, um, but uh, the key thing is there's a team that's producing it, and either they're producing something of value, or they aren't. So Alan Neal for the PDM Show, a quick car cast on big product, little product. Um, please share your comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm at the PDM Show on Facebook and Twitter, and PDM.show on the web. Talk to you next time.